our Dracula is very different to the Draculas that we've seen before in other um, you know, forms of literature or in movies and things like that. Um, he's not a kind of quintessential evil guy. It's a tale about someone that doing good ends up being evil. You know, he's not, it's not black and white, it's very much shades of grey. Um, we showed the journey of Gabriel uh, in the first game um, from light to darkness and in this game we go from dark to very very dark and it's a much more crueler tale, a much darker tale and I think that um, you know following a character that you can identify with is really important so we wanted to have a guy that people you know really saw, really felt for him, they understood how he got to that place and so I think in many ways our Dracula is more human than, than previous incarnations of Dracula. Dracula's motivations are to end his immortal life. That's the main thing that's driving him in the game. Um, you know, he's been alive for a long time. Uh, he's tired of living. He wants to, you know, to, to end this uh, and to move on. Don't misunderstand me. He's an evil guy. He embraced evil for real. And you're going to see that in the game. I think Dracula is quite a scheming character and a very intelligent, uh, predatory animal, if you like, and he's looking to set up some scores. We specifically designed Dracula as a, as a character that people could identify with. Our early designs of Dracula were much more kind of um, a very powerful character. But we wanted to give um, a top throwback to what, how he looked in the original game. So when making a game, you need to be careful about designing characters, especially main characters, especially Dracula. You have to think that it's the first time in Castlevania history that you play with Dracula. Also with, uh, with Dracula having new weapons and, and new abilities, we wanted to give him a much kind of more athletic um, way of moving. You know, his animations have changed quite a lot. Um, we wanted to make him look cool. His hair is longer. You know, he's, he's, got, he's more refined, if you like, more sophisticated. In Castlevania, Dracula's been always a bad guy that appears for a few moments and goes woo and that's it. Uh, we wanted to build a real character with emotions, with contradictions um, from day one. So uh, yeah, pretty much Gabriel was our Dracula from day one. Did they tell you that blood would fight against blood for all eternity? We'd already done a lot of the, the work already with the motion capture actor, so there was kind of like a guide, if you like, to go to. And I think that Rob, what Rob has brought to the to the role is he's, he's made Dracula really dangerous, and you can sense the evil, you can sense the kind of predatory nature of the character that wasn't there before, and I think it really comes across. And that's something he was very certain that he wanted to do um, on the voiceover section, because we kind of wanted him to imitate what the other actor had done. Um, and he was like, no, 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 Gabriel wouldn't do that. He wouldn't be like that. He would be much more like this. And as soon as we heard his performance, you know, uh, we, we realised that actually he was right, that this was the way to do it. I am no longer Gabriel, woman. I am the dragon, Dracul. I am the prince of darkness. I think uh, my favourite Dracula in cinema uh, is probably Gary Oldman's portrayal of Dracula in the Francis Ford Coppola film. It changes quite a lot between, you know, um, a, a real person with emotions. You know, he loves, uh, you know, Winona Ryder's character, and the love between them is quite, you know, very powerful. But also, you know, he's kind of this nasty, he's this monster, uh, and we see that really clearly. And I, I really think his portrayal was probably the best Dracula I've ever seen. I also loved the, the previous one, especially Nosferatu, the old, very, very old movie. We told that was very, a, a bit naive for today's standards, but this is a terrific, you know. But my favourite vampire movie is Near Dark, which I think is one of the best vampire movies I've seen. They really show vampires in a kind of gritty, horrible, uh, very uneasy, uneasy way, which I don't think I've not seen since either. And uh, you know, I think there's an element of that in this as well in Oz too. You know, we we do things with our Dracula that I don't think have been done. So I hope that's given you a deeper insight into our Dracula from Castlevania Lords of Shadow 2. If there's anything else you'd like to know, please send in your questions to the Twitter account address displayed on the screen and I will answer them on behalf of Dave in a response video coming up soon.